Hello, drummers and other creatures. Uh, I'm here today. I'm very, very grateful to be able to speak to the master symbol maker from Bristol in England, Dave Collingwood, who raises his eyebrow when I call him a master symbol maker. Hello, Dave. How are you? We're going to talk bronze and other things today. We are. Hi, Joe. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. I'm very busy. I'm very well. And I'm enjoying the change in the weather and ah. hammering bronze here in my workshop. Yeah. And um, I got to know you because I asked you to uh, repair or modify the Zildjian symbol of mine. And I made a, a video with the first half and I'm due to make a video with the second half, which you laid the symbol a little bit on the bottom very slowly. And we went for a process, which again, I'll kind of get into in my video, explain the process, but where you basically shaved a little bit off the symbol, showed me an example of that. And then we had a little conversation about it and there was a very slow, gradual process and you improved the symbol. Uh, I was very pleased with that. And that the, that's the first time I thought of that. So you are the first sort of symbol modify person I've had anything to do with. And, and also I'm conscious of you as someone who makes symbols from scratch, I guess. And yeah. uh, I've, I've followed you on Instagram for quite a while and watch your YouTube videos. And I find it quite interesting because in my mind, symbols is something that either Turkish or Chinese people do. Um, and yeah, so um, let's do the sort of standard, how did you get into symbol making stuff? I've read your introduction on your website and so on, but maybe you could introduce us all to your background in symbol making. Yeah. Um, for a start, I never really planned to make a business from symbol making. I, I just was quite interested in the fact that it could even be done because like you're saying about modification and even repairs, people don't really realize it's possible. They, they think symbols come from a machine from one of the big companies, and that's kind of the end of it. But I think that is changing a bit, which we'll get into. Um, how did I start? I, I'd heard about a few folks doing it maybe 10, 15 years ago when the Symbolholic Forum was active. I was really interested in symbols. I had no idea about making the things, but I just started hearing about people sitting in their sheds swinging hammers, and that kind of appealed. So I was a touring drummer for several years and then stopped to when I had my children to, to be a present father, because I thought that would be a good thing. Retrained, got some real jobs, tried growing up, didn't enjoy that very much. <laughs> Lost one of my jobs. And at that point, I'd started tinkering with bronze blanks and thought, right, this is my chance. And yeah, just went for it and taught myself to make the things. So I, I basically built my workshop built the tools and got hold of some blanks, just trying to figure it all out as I went really. And and here I am. Is What what is a blank then? So I asked you about like, is there a massive furnace in your back garden? Um, no, is there... no, no, no hot work happens here. You'll find very few symbol makers, independent symbol makers do any of the hot work. There, there is a little that can be done on the different alloys. Uh, Matt Nolan, who's here in the UK as well, has built himself uh, an interesting retempering furnace. So, mm. uh, yeah. But so, you, so, what's a, so, so a blank is that? Can we see a blank? Have you got one to I, hand? I'd love to show you one, but unfortunately, I or fortunately, I've just. <laughs> had, I wait. Actually, wait. I do have one. Two seconds. Okay. So this, this is a 16 inch crash blank and it's uh -huh. got the bell pressed in at the factory that I get the blanks from. This is Turkish B20 bronze, the, the best of the best stuff. Usually what I do is I just get them completely flat mm -hmm. with no mounting hole and then I make the bell by hand as well. Um, I don't have one of those at the moment because I've just finished a batch. These are for, I run courses here in Bristol, sort of experiences three hours of an afternoon, make your own symbol and people yep. come along. Yeah, that's what I'm liking the sound of that, by the way, you might, yeah, <laughs> might get yeah, a visit from me at some point. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, making a bell is a whole other, you know, there's hours and hours you can do on that. So for mm -hmm. other people making, I, I get these pressed in. And that's how it looks. But okay. And so you order in. a pile of these things from, from Turkey, I guess. Yeah. Is that, is that made by some secret, uh, manufacturing uh facility that maybe we've seen their symbols in the shops as well or their yeah i mean most of the turkish symbol companies will supply blanks and mm -hmm. i've tried several 
Um, there's us- they're usually a little bit, it's not really a secret thing, but they don't necessarily like everyone shouting about it. But, yeah. you know, it's not that hard to find out. So pardon my reticence, but... Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah, so, and you get you get a pile of these things, and over the last 10 years, you've learned how to turn them into beautiful sounding symbols, basically. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. According to your description on your site, you're self-taught, you read books about it, and you just said you made your own tools and you got your own workshop. No, no books about it, really. The only things to oh. read at the, at the time when I was uh, teaching myself were, um, there's Craig Lauritsen in, the, in Australia who's got a, a section on his website called Symbol Hammering 101, I think, and that's just got some very basic insights into hammering theory and a couple of techniques. And then there were some uh, some essays, I suppose, from Johan uh, and Mike Skiba, who who were active back in the day. Yeah, so found some essays by other symbol makers diving into a few of the concepts and ideas. And so I read those. But then apart from that, it was literally just hammer to metal, see what happens, ruined next, hammer to right. metal, ruined next, and through that process. Was was the motivation to to get into making it yourself? Was it that sort of every drummer's uh, perpetual frustration with I can't find the ride that I want? Oh, I wish this symbol would do this. Was it from that point of view, or, or was it just a general desire to make things? Yeah, just a, a makey thing, really. I mean, uh, when I was growing up, my granddad he worked on Concord. He worked uh, in the aerospace industry here in Bristol, so he was very handy and in his shed in his garage he just had a load of old tools and was always teaching me how to fix things and make things and so i've just developed that just that need to tinker really and Mm -hmm. i love symbols and wanted to work out how to make a piece of metal make a noise i mean they make a noise already so Mm -hmm. how to adjust them to make certain different noises certain different noises and and so i don't know did you start off just for yourself you i guess you weren't thinking about it being a business originally um and what do you need to get started as a symbol making person because you're offering courses if someone came on a course like can i learn how to make a symbol and then would i feasibly be able to come home and do it myself or you know is it very specialized yeah uh, in terms of gear yeah there's a lot of investment of time to learn the thing and yeah money to get the gear together but I, I mean, I run the Patreon where I, I teach. I've got Symbolsmith students from all over the world. And uh, some of them come to me, literally never never touched a hammer before in any circumstance ever. And they're like, right, what do I need? And so I help them through that. But if you have a hammer and you can source an anvil somehow or make yourself one, um, then you can get started. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when it gets to the lathe, you can't just go to like B&Q or, or whatever local hardware store and buy cymbal lathes. So, yeah. so it's, for me, at least, it was, I need a motor and a gearbox and this and this, and I pieced it together myself. So it okay. does take a bit of designing and, and help. Not that did, I had any, because I didn't ask for any. Yeah. So, did, I mean, is this, have you, have you built your workshop? Is it in your home space or do you have a separate space? I'm now in a workshop in an industrial unit and in, mm-hmm. in the far east of, of Bristol, about as far east as you can go. I did start in the garage of the home I used to live in, and the neighbours weren't too happy about it, but there we go. We all know that as drummers. Yep. Um, and yeah, just sort of found a bigger workshop and then outgrew that and found this one, which is, can't see because I got the curtains around, but yeah, very big and comfortable and fun to work in. And so how long did it take uh, making symbols before you felt like you made a symbol that you were happy enough to play and then after that that you felt like you could approach you know potential customers and say here i've made a symbol buy it please i mean in a, in a way i'm still on that journey and i <laughs> kind of, i kind of hope i i always am in a way yeah. so i i didn't really start approaching customers i i just started making and then you know word spreads there's someone in bristol making symbols fixing symbols and Maybe, you know, the odd Instagram post just going, hey, this is what I'm up to. And then people started coming to me going, I've got a crack in a symbol. Can you fix it? Can you make something? The first symbol I ever sold was to a a local drummer who's become a a good customer and a friend. And it was a flat ride. And I I was making it and I wasn't happy with where it was. So I turned it inside out, which is all part of 
the production process, depending how you're doing doing it. And when I turned it inside out, I just thought I'll tap it, and it and I went, that sounds pretty good. I'll just I probably shouldn't be admitting to this, but like I'll just leave it inside out because it's a flat ride. And this this drummer guy came along and and went, I like that. I'll have it, please. And and so I kind of accidentally made a good symbol. But the way I see it, but there's being self-taught and always I'm always adding new things into my process to try and learn more and try and put barriers in the way so I can overcome them. I like mm -hmm. learning and unpicking things. Um, so it's it's kind of every, every time every so often there'll be a symbol that I'd make and I go. Oh, that's a new, that's the next level. I've understood something I didn't understand for this previous batch. Then I'll go on and on and I'll discover new issues and go and get really frustrated and throw my toys out of the pram. But then I'll make <laughs> another symbol that's like, oh, there's the next rung of the ladder. And so it yeah. just kept going like that and it's still going that way. And is that is that next rung, is that a sort of emergent property of your symbol making skills or do you have a sort of mental uh, goal in mind of of what the next level might be as in does the next level just offer itself to you when it mm. appears or do you go oh my next level will be when i can do such and such it's a good question i think probably both because there are always specific issues that will creep up anyone else who's tried making symbols or who does make symbols will understand the area near the bell can be really really problematic really easy to overdo or underdo and so you get, you know, barking seals and loose tonal areas. Do you, do you know what I mean? Sort of honk mm -hmm. when you get I, them. Yeah, loose tonal area, I can imagine what that means. Yeah. yeah, when you get what I would think of as slightly dead areas on the symbol. Yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah, basically. Or maybe you <clears throat> you hit somewhere and there's this dominant tone that's perhaps a bit ugly or something. But I chased those around the surface of the symbol for ages. Kind of. And, and what I'd find is that you figure out one issue and go, oh, great, I've moved ahead. But then because you're working just in one area and hyper-focusing, suddenly you're pulling everything else kind of out of, of where it was and go, oh, now I've got to look down here because there's a problem somewhere else. Then you go and tinker there and then other problems arise somewhere else. And so I've developed this kind of holistic view of making. But yeah, sometimes it is driven very much by specific things. And sometimes, sometimes frustration and just at the end of the tether can be quite a good guide because mm -hmm. I do get a bit kind of belligerent and fed up sometimes and then I'll just swing the hammer in this wild way that I think is kind of destructive and from that the, sometimes there's ah that's done something I wasn't expecting that I see as positive so yeah short answer both is that an expensive thing to do sometimes yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> not, so much, not so much now because I I'm quite comfortable in what I do and the, the the hurdles I put in place, I know a way around them. Or if, you know, if I can't get over them, I know how to kind of backtrack or... Okay, so maybe at the earlier but, stages of the process, you could lead yourself to a ruinous situation a bit more easily and now you'd know how to get out of it. And maybe yeah, my, my early goes... batch... Sorry, yeah, my early batch of blanks, batches of blanks, essentially are just just went on the trash pile. I, I kind of joke with new students that um, essentially what I was doing was just taking my money and lighting it on fire. <laughs> you know. But saying yeah. that, of course, every mistake is a learn is a learning opportunity for what happens yeah, next. Very much so. M mistakes are the the key to learning. Yeah, I think so. In terms of um, when you talk about being self taught, there's a lot of mythology around uh, self taught musicians, and some of it is waved about as almost it seems like an excuse to not engage in a learning process with somebody with more experience a teacher or whatever mm -hmm. um but some of it is um yeah that there's it, it's a complex uh thing and again i'm a, i'm a teacher that's what i do most of the time and i'm a teacher that i shouldn't be saying this but i'm a teacher that's coming around more and more to an understanding that my job isn't to instruct most of the time to say this is what you should be doing but it's more to help people in a conversational way to figure out. And this is something that appealed to me on your website in, a, in one of your blog posts. You talked about, uh, I think it's uh, sh the idea of whether you should share your knowledge freely. And you were talking about in the teaching process, you're not so much wanting to tell people what to do. In fact, you're, you're trying to steer away from that. Uh, you're trying to encourage people 
to figure out how to de- develop their own skill set. Mm. And I think that's really the kind of teaching that I find the most interesting. And um, when I, I I take lessons regularly, and when I take lessons as a kind of experienced drummer with other experienced drummers, there's that seems to be the natural uh, scenario more of the time, which is it's a conversation. What are you trying to do? And there's, there's not a kind of I'm the person who's going to tell you to do this. And mm. so, um, so my one question is, in being self-taught, first of all. That can be sometimes, literally, I've worked everything out for myself. But but at other times, you know, a lot of like self-taught musicians, they sat for five years in the uh, wings of an auditorium and watched somebody and went and asked questions a lot of the time. So have you um, had an opportunity to to learn from other symbol makers within the context of being self-taught? Have you really uh, been like uh, in the ivory tower, um, you know, banging banging away and really just using your own judgment? Um... It's it's a really good point, I think, and there's some psychology in it. I'm sure this this idea of kind of disappearing and being self-taught, and and you kind of touched on the on the fact that symbol making is kind of a guarded or has been a guarded thing, um, and so that whole idea of how much do you share, how much do you give away, um, but I, I I'd say I'm basically I'm quite an awkward person. And I kind of don't want help, even though I might need it, you know, and yeah. that that um that spills over into all areas of my life and I get myself into all sorts of pickles. But um I think I, I reached out to to be fair, I reached out to Matt Nolan once and said, Look, I'm having this problem up near the bell again with the hammering. I think I've overhammered. What are you thinking? He went, Yeah, overhammered. And so, you know, there were there was a little bit of kind of this is what I think, what do you think? What actually, in that case as well, I actually, I mean, Matt didn't know he wasn't here with me. So, so you know, he he um, basically told me what he thought based on what I told him. But I actually figured out I'd underhammered, underhammered it. But, the, you know, that was through my own sort of trial and error. I reached out to Nikki Moon about certain sort of ink to use. So, yeah, there, there is a sort of, there is a network there. But apart from that, in terms of, hammering and what happens to the metal and what lathing does i've i have learned from others in that i've watched them and i've taught them and then seen how that's kind of gone with them and maybe how Mm. they've taken what i've shown them and manipulated it for their use and that's helped me see different ways because yeah if you're just blinkered down that channel of it's my way or the highway then you know you can probably do quite successful stuff but Mm -hmm. what i'm trying to do with the patreon as well is just open it up so there is sharing and there is this kind of organic growth and so anybody who joins your patreon will be able to learn about symbol making Mm -hmm. yeah there's there's stuff there so uh, have you got a community of other symbol makers there essentially yeah i think there's about i'm approaching 50 people at the moment cool and are people sharing their their experiences quite widely about yeah yeah, I mean the, the the reason I one reason I set it up was because I don't want to get too much into this, but Brexit happened yeah. and, and had a big effect on my business, mm-hmm. and so I adapted. And I've been thinking about training for a little while and then sharing. Has it made stuff. it more difficult to sell symbols abroad then? I oh yeah, so. yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Um, but you know, I'm soaking that one up. I don't want to get into the politics of it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, yeah yeah that's where i um yeah i thought right now is the time because this could be you know an earner really as well mm-hmm. but i have yeah. been thinking about it and i yeah i just preferred the idea of sharing and people joining together so on this patreon thing there's a few levels one level the lowest kind of tier you can sign up for like five quid a month and you get access to all the posts and i do lots of videos i've got timothy roberts doing guest mm-hmm. videos for me we do yep. a group He's meeting great. every month so there's usually about sort of 15 or so of us who will come together and anyone you know beginners to pros and anyone who's having a specific problem can chuck it out there and then everyone piles on and okay and is, is is it of interest also to people who might not be directly interested in actually making their own symbols but just want to learn more about the process yeah that's that's what i'm trying to add now or not add but develop is that side of it because it is very focused on mixing mixing making fixing and modifying 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I think anyone with a passing interest in how they're made, there'll be a lot for them there and access to all the people that make them. And But I've got more plans with a few people I'm going to team up with to blow it open a bit to just okay. symbol nerdery, basically. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. So, um, I, again, looking at your site, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to maybe inquire about in terms of like your potential customers, um, if I'm looking for a symbol, I can go on your site and you, you are advertising, I think there's, I don't know, 15 or 20 symbols there at the moment. Uh, there's lots of very large rides, which I'm quite scared of. I had a 24 inch ride for a brief time to see what it was like, but just the size of it, I found very imposing, but there yeah. seems to be a lot of popularity for these enormous symbols. Um, but yeah, you've got a, a selection of rides and crashes and I think some hi-hats there as well. Um, do you also like do a sort of commission work? So do, do I phone you up and say, oh, I've got this uh, desire for a symbol that does such and such. And then you would you produce it according to my wishes and, and specifications. Yes. Yeah. I've <clears throat> I, I rethought that whole element not long ago. And I actually I had a section on my website for commission specifically, but I've just taken that down for now while I rethink. I, I like doing commissions and yeah, I've got several, on, I've always got some on the go. Um, and yeah, my, my whole thing with commissions is if people come to me going, I want you to make the the ride that was on this really rare 1950s jazz recording. I'm, I'm, I'm like, so, so, some other symbol makers can deal with that and get mm-hmm. you there and that's fine. But my thing with commissions is I can make you a Collingwood symbol mm-hmm with you know do you want a prominent stick sound do you want it to be kind of washy tight what you know what bell size yeah i definitely do that regularly but when it gets very specific and people start throwing flowery language around uh, Mm -hmm. it's just not for me no no judgment yeah but so um I, i feel like i can kind of dig that idea so that your um process of making a a symbol um yeah it it sounds like you, you can get a general picture of the thing and then we'll see what art comes out of that uh, yeah. according to a set of guidelines but when yeah. you're saying i want to have exactly this specification um i guess that's not as much fun as well like to me if somebody wants you to imitate exactly i want you to play exactly like charlie watts on this and yeah. it's like yeah i could i could sort of like go for the gist of charlie watts but i'm mm-hmm. not going to try and like literally imitate charlie watts because like Where's the fun Charlie in that? Watts was Charlie Watts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I, yeah, I find that with these classic jazz symbols, the Nefertiti ride and all this kind of stuff. And it's yeah. something that I think we touched on a, a little earlier. There's, there's so much folklore and mystique around these things. And so much of it is wrong. Uh, well, first of all, it's the hands of the man that used the stick. Well, that was where I was 99%. Going oh yeah, yeah, totally. Who played it? what mics they were using the room, how they were feeling on the day. Yeah, there are certain characteristics you can pick out for sure. And I, one thing I do with my commissions, I say, any examples you can send, please do. And so I can pick out certain elements. But when it comes to straight ahead clones and copies, there's a lot of clones and copies going on. Some people do it very well. And some people I think are just relying on my students will tell you, as soon as I hear the phrase old K, I just shudder. And that's <laughs> not because of a dislike of old Ks. It's just yeah. anything that has a kind of fetishism involved is I, I don't really, I just want to skirt around the edge and go, can we please talk about what made that sound that way at that time? Yeah. But coming back to another point you made about the ivory tower and the blink of vision, I think there's part of this sort of it's, I'm doing it my way. I'm not going to copy because I'm an artist. That's the artist's excuse a little bit, I think, mm-hmm. as well. So to be really honest, part of why I don't offer to clone a 1963 K or whatever is because I don't think I can, Yeah, re- re- really honestly. And, and I'm happy to be open about that and do things my own way. It's, and I'm, I'm a very self-critical, kind of shy, introverted person. And so if I made it, I'd just be going, oh, God, it's awful. I don't think it's right. <laughs> which is entirely my issue, but I've learned to be comfortable with the way I work and I'm doing okay with it. I think, yeah, I mean, the the issue of being self-critical is is also very interesting because I'm self-critical to the extent that if if I ever sort of felt, oh, I'm doing a really good job here, 
then I think, oh no, there's something wrong with me. I need to um, I need to check in with myself here. Uh, yeah. And there seem to be um, well, I don't want to go into the, there's two kinds of people, but there definitely seem to be a certain contingent of people who need to feel like they're doing really well to be motivated. And then there's another contingent who seem to kind of feel like, oh, I'm I'm not not getting I'm not in the right place. And that's the thing. And yeah. I, I feel comfortable being somewhat dissatisfied with myself um, because that that I, then I want to practice and, and sort of improve. And yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes people think I'm a bit sort of dark uh, for, for having that view because I, I don't really like this. Like, oh, yeah, well done. Blah, blah, blah. It's not I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm definitely not Steve Gadd or whatever mm. it's like. And, and well, even then, I think, you know, Steve Gadd's still learning. And so I, li- I like being dissatisfied a little bit. Um, I think some of the I some of the best, there. yeah, some of the best artists, and this is a sweeping statement. It's certainly not applicable to everyone, but probably if you interviewed Steve Gadd, he he'd say, yeah, sometimes I'm learning and trying stuff, and maybe I'm wrong, but you know, yeah. so- no, he was interviewed by Rick Beato recently. It was very nice, and he was talking about his, you know, how he's practicing. He's got his little sticks with the rubber tips on, and he's practicing his rudiments on the table and coming up with new ideas. And so, yeah, uh, and again, I don't know if he feels that sort of always being dissatisfied, but I think it's possible even to be that high achiever and feel like, ah, oh. oh, I'm not quite satisfied with what I'm doing. I, so. I, I, the psychology, just, yeah, I'd just briefly go into it. The psychology of it is a whole other topic we could talk about, of course. But yeah. I find if there's any sort of, like, massive show of strength and display of amazingness, I'm like, I don't, and this is entirely to do with my issues or whatever. I don't quite trust it. It's like, yeah, and probably that's because that's just not who I am. But also, I don't quite trust myself as well. So I'm somewhat, like you say, I'm somewhere in the middle and I'm perfectly comfortable with that. It's taken yeah. me years to get here, but but here I am. It's, yeah, it's, I think it's good. It's always good to be sceptical. And mm. uh, this is something that people tend to, or there seems to be anyway, a tendency to push back when you express scepticism about these um, certain uh, particular activities, I guess. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from that a little bit. Uh, but so like, within the, within that, how do you... Um, because something that I found, I mean, I'm I'm not institutionally trained. I've had one-on-one tuition with people. So some of my learning has been self-taught and sometimes uh, I've taken lessons with people. Uh, I currently take lessons uh, and dip in and out of stuff and I teach myself stuff. And one of the things I find, and, and yeah, I like, I always like learning and always trying to discover things. And uh, something you were saying earlier about you like, uh, you know, discovering the obstacles in your work and then learning how to overcome those. And that's kind of part of what, what um, motivates you. Um, but something that, that I find is uh, maybe there's there's not always a source of validation and that having some sort of outside reference to, okay, well, maybe I'm doing all right here. Maybe this is going all right. So for me, it would be when students evolve and, and learn something uh, or when I have a good communication with somebody and make some uh, recordings that somebody likes and so on. Um, when you're making symbols, is is the validation, the fact that you have clients that come back to you and, and want to order symbols or is, is it an internal thing where you just sort of know that your symbols are sounding better and better? Um, but what's 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 the sense that you're you're on the right path? Where does that come from? If you if yeah. you have such a thing, yeah. Sometimes uh, I think that last thing that you said about knowing that they're sounding better and better is certainly a good thing. I I can try and step back, you know, perspective wise from them and hit them and go, yeah, they are actually getting better, whatever that means. Um, so yeah, that that's quite cool. And and I think the more you learn the sort of like exponentially now they're getting sort of finer in maybe smaller subtler ways but but they're each sort of equally as satisfying um so there's that but yeah just you know i people send me stuff on instagram of like oh i've just done a huge gig in germany or whatever and here's your symbol and it sang and it was great it really did what i wanted it to do that that's a, a nice boost you know and yeah, all the modifications I do, like for yourself, for example, mm-hmm. to hear people's feedback and go, yeah, it's doing at least more of what I wanted it to do. Yeah. 
It's a real improvement. I mean, there's I've I've got quite a lot of thoughts about that. And and uh, but when I first spoke to you, I think there was a little bit of a oh, I don't know how to describe what I don't like and what I would like. And that there's uh, again, I remember I remember being somewhat uh, aware of Symbolholic back in the day. Uh, there are various online drum discussion fora, if if one's allowed to say that, um, where people. I mean, and there's this thing where where this, uh, the gear thing has become a bit mad, and I, I suffer from gear madness as, as much as anybody. Um, but yeah, there's there's this like, how do you describe a symbol? How do you know what symbol is good? Uh, if I go to like a big old fashioned drum shop and I try all the symbols, they're all attached to the wall, and you go ding 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 ding, bush 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 bush, and something goes, oh, there's the one that I like. And I've had a few occasions in my life where I've just gone right. I'm going to Foots as was. I'm going to go through all the symbols. I don't care how much it costs. If I like a symbol, I'm going to buy it. On the odd occasion, I've had that much uh, opportunity. And I've done that. And sometimes it's just rubbish. You get home and you think, I'm, I'm never going to use this. You take the symbol to a gig and you think, this is horrible. And there's various things with, with symbols in particular. One of them is when I'm sitting on top of the thing, my experience of it is, is very different from the audience's experience. And even I'm playing the drums a lot. It's very hard to gauge that. And there are times when I've been at a gig, uh, let's say with a band where I know the drummer or something. And so I might stand in the audience and watch. If it's a small venue, I might go up and have a little tinkle in between the sets or something and get a sound. And you go, oh, this is a different thing. When I stand in the audience, the guy's cymbal sounds amazing. But if I was sitting on top of it, I wouldn't think anything of it. And I think that's part of this legendary cymbal thing as well. That, As you were saying in the studio, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening, including the musician themselves. Um, but it's such, um, it's such a complicated thing. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to tell. So, so like with the symbol that you've, you've fixed for me on mm. some level, I can say, I, I know that this symbol is better. It's more usable again, that you brought the pitch down a little bit. You made it more crashable. The sound opens up, but, but you've kept the stick definition. And in my mind, I can kind of hear this scenario that it, that would sit well, which I think with an, a nice electric blues gig, that would be a great ride to use. If I was doing something with a little bit of Latin, I think it would be quite uh, a good symbol to use for a very light swing situation. As we mentioned earlier, uh, I think actually heavier symbol, because whenever I've wanted a sort of jazzy swingy symbol, I've always looked for something really light and you get that <sighs> sort of sound. And actually that's, you lose the stick a lot of the time and you end up with too much just wash. And so there's that thing where, I'm quite aware that the symbol that jumps up to me and goes, oh, I'm nice, isn't actually the best symbol to play uh, in a lot of situations. And so how do you even get to the point where you can figure out whether a symbol is any good or not? And then you've got to decide to make one of the damn things. Um, so how do you uh, sort of, I don't know, how do you set up your your stock, I guess? So you're you're thinking, I just, oh, I fancy making a 23 and a half inch bride today. Or are you thinking, there are a certain number of customers who would like a symbol with this type of profile and this type of a bell or whatever. Well, there's, there, I mean, there's a lot in there. I, I, my short answer is I don't know. So, so like <laughs> generally I'll just, if I'm ordering blanks, not for commission, if I, if I'm just making stuff to sell, I'll, I'll just kind of think I fancy making some 22s or 23s and maybe I'll try a really thin one and a really heavy one and, for a start, see what I can learn from them and then, you know, hope they turn out all right. Um, so I'm not really, you know, I, consciously at the front of my brain or wherever it resides, I'm not necessarily thinking there's a market for a specific symbol. Because I think anything that makes a noise has a market, even if that market's one person. You know, the, the symbol blank I showed you earlier makes a noise. So part of the perspective issue creeps in from step one. It's like, why am I even changing that sound? Because mm -hmm. that's a sound that can be musical in a certain context. Um, Is so, it yeah, possible just, to hear the sound of that thing? Do you have the I mean, means of making it go just plonk? Press out on the on the oh, zoom. It, oh yeah, because yeah, it's um. Have you got original sound on? Ah oh, no, it's not yet. It's not going yeah, to listen to I, you. I can do you. I can do your recording if you like, and we can tack it on. Yeah, why not? That's, that's interesting. Okay.
Yeah, so so that whole perspective issue, I mean, we've all, not all, but, you know, if you've ever been in a studio and, and you're just working on a mix, how easy is it to lose perspective after the 30th time you've looped a verse and just go, I don't know what I'm listening to. Anymore. Yeah, and it's the same thing. It, it, you reminded me of, of mixing when uh, you were talking about the cymbal and you're hammering around with this problem and you yeah. get very focused on that and then another problem comes up. Exactly. It's the same when you get hyper-focused on the sound of the bass drum and it's you've ruined faded. everything changing and changing one alters the balance of everything else mm -hmm. to balance this really complex thing so yeah generally i'm just kind of swinging hammers following my instincts i suppose subconsciously i'll be guided by what i've made before and what is out there but i mean generally symbols are pretty much within a range the same size and the same shape as all other symbols with you know mm -hmm. with certain parameters so I think it's about the subtleties of what you can bring to it as a as a maker, and that, again, that's one thing I try to encourage in finding one's own voice. Yeah, but uh, I mean, so is say, there like a Dave Collingwood vibe to symbols that could be somehow described? Or apparently, I've had people coming in and trying stuff and going, "Oh yeah, it's got that Collingwood thing." Really? Okay, that's cool. So. Well, I hope so. Yeah, um, but like. I mean, there's a couple of things I want to go back to, and one of them, um, I, I guess, is the idea that without someone to play it, there is no symbol, really. Mm -hmm. And without a band and a drum kit as well, I think, you well, know, that's... Yeah, but, but this, the idea of perspective and, and, you know, sitting on top of it and hearing it versus in the room, it's like, who are you making for? Who are you playing for? And, uh, okay, for me as a maker here, I don't gig. Like, I mean, I used to tour like hundreds of gigs a year. And, and so I, was, I had a symbol for a setting. So maybe I've sort of lost that element and I need to think about it more. But my goal with symbol making, I'll only sell symbols I like the sound of. And like might be, I think there's something vibey about that, that you know. And I, again, maybe pretentiously, I, I've said this before, but I, I feel like I'm making half of a relationship for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, and then if they take that on stage or in the studio or whatever, if it speaks to them and they feel like it's kind of their expression is coming through their arm and stick and whatever, and then out into the mics or the world, then hopefully that translates then to an audience. I, I never yeah. kind of, I don't really go for the, the audience. <laughs> I don't know how to put this in a nice way, but I don't, I don't really want to consider the audience. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. yeah, I mean the thing is that it 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 evokes, if you don't mind, a sort of mystical relationship with the gear, which I think exists and doesn't get spoken about enough. Uh, I mean, I think this applies more directly to drums, which I'm fairly convinced. And I haven't been in a situation where I could like listen to like five different drum kits of different woods and all of this. But I'm fairly certain that a drum is just a wooden cylinder, and um, people make so much hoo-ha about this drum and that drum, but actually the piece of plastic you stretched over the top or cowls, um, it makes more of a difference in the way you've tuned it and whatever. And we're so fixated with it. And I think that there's more of a sort of magical property. Something about the word Gretsch makes mm -hmm. me feel a certain way that, that has a, is a sort of spell. And that's more, the DW makes me feel a certain way. Ugh in my case, right? But Gretsch makes me feel, ooh, uh, Ludwig you know, makes me feel, like oh. you've, you've got yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm totally, yeah, I'm unsponsorable. I'm not loyal enough. <laughs> but, um, the, um, yeah, and I think the same, like, with, with symbols, I don't know, I never got attached to a name of a symbol, which is something I was going to uh, ask you about as well, but um, the, uh, I think there's a mystical relationship. So, yeah, the fact that you've created a symbol that resonates, if that's a pun, um, with a, a particular musician, that that generates a sort of mystical property. There's not necessarily something inherent to the symbol in a physical way, but this particular individual symbol. And, yeah, the idea, and that's what I was going to say to you, so, like, what is the... Um, the draw for people coming to somebody like yourself or again there's there seem to be more and more uh independent symbol makers coming up what's yeah. what's the um what's the the customer's motivation for wanting these kind of symbols so when i if i come to your website i mean something to me is draws me that i think okay well uh, looking at the the pricing it's very reasonable compared to if I went to a, a normal music shop to look at uh, high-end, good quality symbols from all those manufacturers we're familiar with. 
Um, so in terms of like, if I can afford to buy nice symbols, I can come and buy your symbols just the same. Um, but there's something about, uh, something I, I feel your symbol will be very unique. Um, I'll find a symbol that speaks to me a little bit and there's something a bit special uh, compared. And now I don't know anything about how those big companies make their symbols and whether, but there's something, there's alchemy or something like this about the process. Is that the thing that the customers are drawn to a lot of the time? And and how do they, how do they even hear about you? Is that just like random? I think word of mouth is usually <laughs> one of the things. Um, a customer's motivation, I mean, it could be a, any number of things, really. I this the the idea of the mystical relationship and then a, a sort of badge that speaks to you. I mean, I think there's a grey area between the two because to speak about Gretsch or DW or whoever you want to talk about, <clears throat> I'm I'm very open to the idea that there's there's a lot I don't know about certain things. I don't know much about drums except how to play them to a degree that suits me at the moment i don't know really about massive differences between woods and depths and and all this kind of stuff but i'm willing to think if there's an army of people out there telling me there's a difference i'm going okay who am i to say there isn't it's just stuff i don't know but at the same time there very much is this kind of again fetishism over certain things and brand loyalty is a big thing but then if someone, one motivation for me might be that someone likes the fact it's made in the UK. Mm. You know, as simple as that. And of course, yeah. I'll, I'll take that customer. There is something very alluring about that, actually. Yeah, but, but you know, that's not, I'm not doing it for that reason. And I don't no. want to be, I don't want to really ride on any of those things. In a way, I don't know if I'm going to re regret saying this, but why a customer comes to me is none of my business, mm -hmm. really. Um so if my symbol speaks to them for some reason, and you're saying there's, you know, is there a Collingwood vibe? And I've been told there is. Now, yeah. is that vibe because there's a certain sound or because for whatever reason, some customers have decided they like what I do from whatever angle. So is that yeah. not also kind of becoming a badge with a feeling? Yeah. So I don't know. Is that something that maybe almost, if you thought about that too much, it would ruin the idea? I think about uh, everything yeah. too much. <laughs> and that's okay. but, but i've decided to i'm just going to make the things and yeah. like, hopefully it's the idea i think for some people that i'm just one guy doing something i'm passionate about and hopefully that comes through customer doesn't like one of my symbols don't buy my symbol maybe you'll yep. like a timothy roberts or a mike mongello or a nicky moon or all the other guys that are cropping up doing amazing yeah. work i don't know yeah don't know. it's I'm funny isn't trying it? to get on with my life somehow <laughs> and so uh yeah so i guess one other thing is like this idea of uh like actively selling yourself in that way when you're set up as a business as some people will be very um conscious and again i'm i'm saying this in terms of i've got my youtube channel and i'm trying to sort of uh i'm, I'm trying to um, i guess offer some authentic version of my teachings that people can look at and go oh yeah i kind of like the cut of his jib maybe i'll have a few yeah. lessons and people will find my videos and go oh yeah he seems all right i'll have a, a few lessons with him and sometimes that evolves into a long-term relationship sometimes people have a couple of lessons and whatever um but i'm trying to sort of just present this is more or less my approach to things uh and i'll i'll take my chances i'm not going out of my way to sort of go oh yeah and nine out of ten dentists recommend whatever colgate or whatever it is I'm, I'm just going, well, I'm kind of like this. I'm, I've got my doubts about things. The more, yeah. I mean, the more I know, the more I just think, oh, no one knows anything. That's, that's yeah. all. But um, yeah, do you have a sort of marketing idea there or are you, are you going for the same sort of, I, I mean, I think I know the answer anyway. Yeah, I think but, you do. And again, yeah. I think it's artist excuse in a way. Yeah. Um, I, I think, like you said the word authentic, I think authenticity is what I was getting at. I, I just want to be authentic. And as soon as I start thinking marketing and branding and angles, I, I get a little afraid. And that's not to say it's dirty or that it shouldn't be done. It's just, I, I don't know. I think I should really get someone else on board, but yeah, because no, because there is a weird, there's a weird thing about marketing as a deliberate thing in itself. I, I could, I could get into saying a bunch of, uh, not all that good stuff, but you've nailed it with the logo. 
I have to say. Well, look, thank you. I was coming to the logo because um, that's one thing I've struggled with, really, is I, I went through the whole thing of if they're unbranded, they're a bit mystical and, and they just look like pieces of metal. That that's, another, that's one thing I try and teach my students is let's not forget this is a bit of metal that makes a noise. Simple yeah. as that, kind of. But yeah, I started branding, I started using the logo and then kind of got a bit scared and shy and stopped. And then enough people have said, it's a great logo, do it. And I, yeah, it's not like I'm selling my soul to the devil, just putting my mark on something. So no, it's fact, good. I think it's good. Yeah, I yeah, I saw. On, I put it on me. So um, <laughs> that's a yeah. sign of real faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do. I like the way I designed it as well. It was very much in keeping. Yeah, I wanted to ask if that was your own work as well, since you're a self, self doing. Yeah, yeah. So, and and I've told this on other kind of interviews and stuff. But basically, I, I was in a bit of having a bit of a crisis and dilemma and all this kind of stuff, just being a bit of a an awkward sod and uh just thought I need to do something that just makes me feel like I'm raising my game a little bit. This was several years ago now. And I thought I'd get a logo up together. And I actually, this, this one here, it's yep. just something I had tattooed when I was on tour. I got it done in Seattle. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, maybe that could be a logo because it's got nothing to do with symbols. And that might be quite <laughs> funny or yeah. something, something the way my head works. But um, yeah, I sat down and, and I just... The other one I, is better, definitely, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, I think I made yeah. the right choice there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just sat down and started sketching and the idea of the sea in the sea came to me and it started looking like sort of emanating sound waves. Yeah. And then I, I drew it just really quickly on a notepad with four circles just stacked in each other, freehand, and then there's the line to cut the edge off. I thought, great, because I work with circles, sine waves, CC, Collingwood symbols, looks a bit like parts of a symbol. Yeah. Came home, got onto Photoshop, started trying to do it with all these clever, clever, clever golden ratio, trying to get the, seeing what size circles worked. And it just didn't look right until I literally measured to like fractions of a millimeter, the, the drawing I did and completely replicated that. And that's, that's what it is now. So yeah, it's it great. It came about really organically. Yeah, yeah. It's and and when you think about you know some companies would pay like a consultant a million pounds or something to make yeah. something like that. It's very cool. I like it. Yeah, and I and so pay and, myself anything for it. I need. No. <laughs> did it as a freebie. Gave yourself a symbol. Yeah. 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 Symbol of symbol. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, I think we've been talking for I think about an hour. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's a, a good place to wrap things up. Um, I'm, yeah, as I say, I'm going to make uh, some sort of follow up video where I'll talk through the process of getting the symbol modified. So hopefully mm. that will be findable by people who want to get a symbol modified and know something about the procedure. But, uh, you know, because overall I, I found that it was really cool. It was, I think, price wise was really good. Um, the, you were very responsive, which was great. I like that, you know, and the fact that there was all this feedback going on. So I'll kind of describe that in some detail. Um, yeah. But is there anything else you'd, you'd sort of like to add to the conversation? I mean, just, just based on what you just said, I always like when it's modifications or commissions, I like it to be a conversation that's going on. I'm never going to just go bang, 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 or lathe, 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 there you go. I think that's what you asked for, off you go. It's It's like... And I think I am a bit overcautious sometimes, people have said, but I do a little bit and then send an update video and go, what do you think? And then we talk yeah. about it because it's, it's you that's going to be playing it ultimately. So Yeah, I think I, that's super cool. Kind of, yeah. Better to be cautious than uh, yeah. rush in. Yeah, yeah lay okay. through the thing or, or hammer a second bell into it and go, that would be cool. Yeah. Enjoy, you know? um, but yeah, in terms of adding anything else, I... I don't think so, really. I mean, I'm I'm off to the Chicago Drum Show where I'm going to be meeting nine more of of my Symbol Smith independent buddies. Only one of whom I've ever met before. There's only two of us in the UK, and we're both going over to Chicago next month. Okay, but yeah, oh, there's only just... two Symbol makers now because like Matt Nolan, I came across at some uh, drum events in the past, and yeah. and I was already like, oh yeah, an English guy making symbols. That's kind of cool. Yeah, um, he lives really yeah. close to me. We went for lunch the other day and, and yeah, we're, you know, good friends. But yeah, th you you hinted earlier at the, there's more and more independence cropping up. And I, running the Patreon, I've, I'm having the pleasure of training a lot of them and working with a lot of them. But yeah, the whole thing about the Chicago show is they're doing this presentation about the changing face of symbol industry. Not that we pose any big 
threat to Zildjian or anything, but mm. that just there's more more folk out there doing it, and I'm really trying to help open it up and bring people in. So that is a very roundabout plug for my Patreon. Mm -hmm. to, <laughs> if people want well, to sign we'll, up, we'll put then. we'll put a link to the uh, to your Patreon account on the uh, the description cool. section of the YouTube video, and I would encourage anybody to uh, follow Dave's work. It's really really cool. Um, and you know, go and buy buy some of these symbols. I'm tempted myself. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to come and make make a crash. Um, and my partner would love it. She'd love to make a crash. We could do his and hers crashes. Yeah, you can have two two halves of an orchestral pair, and you there know, you when something great happens in life, you each pick one up. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh dear, I'm going to have to take it off the stand then for that. But... Yeah, yeah, but. Cool. Okay. I, I feel like I've had quite a bit of insight uh, from this. Maybe uh, we could do a sort of follow up at sure. some point. I feel like I'm I'm trying to um, work out my what my interview skills are. And uh, maybe when I feel like I've tightened up a bit and I'm, I'm going to reflect on the symbol, as I said, with the video and see if I can say something coherent about it, because I, I think that it's very difficult. It's very difficult to 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 even establish like why. I don't know. I've, and, and there's something more interesting about cymbals than drums, ultimately. So as I, say, I think drums are a bit more just a cylinder with some plastic stretched over it. Um, and cymbals, I don't know, there's a, there's a certain magic and alchemy to them in a way. There is. But one thing we didn't really get into that much, which we could next time, is, like I said, that it's a bit of metal that makes a noise kind of yeah. mantra that we have versus complete, like, lust and dark art sort of thing. And I, I'm mm -hmm. trying to just pull you know, get it out of the shadows a bit and go, here's kind of how to do it in a way. And again, like you said, I don't show people how to do it. I do, I have started more and more doing tutorials, literally just like a camera on me making a symbol. I've just decided to start sharing that stuff because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's cool. I mean, people have said to me, don't share too much. You know, I've, I've worked with teachers who've said, oh, yeah, oh, on your YouTube channel, don't give too much away. And it's like, I think a thing number one is I can give everything away because the thing that you're going to come to me for as a student is a something personal that I can say uh, I can make a broadcast and you won't get any of the the stuff that you would have in a personal lesson it just just can't you happen. Never get the minutiae of it. And yeah, and like so there's a feedback it, process. Yeah, and so the whole idea, you know, I've had when I I, I realize I'm dragging this on now, so um, that's all right. But when um I started. And I, I've said this before, started um, just putting the idea out there of training. I did have folk come to me going, don't do it, don't give it away, don't do this. And I don't, the world doesn't work that way anymore necessarily. I think it could do. And it's my knowledge to do with what I want. I've, it's all my knowledge I've built from my own head. Yeah. I fancy sharing it, to be honest. And I want people make in, interested and involved in the craft if they yeah. want to. Yeah. who wouldn't have a and if you know if they become competition so be it that's it's healthy yeah. Let's, there's let's, yeah there's got to be room for everyone you know in in um yeah. in the world and and again i think it's like there's if you have a faith in your own particular individual approach to things and you've gone through a process that only you know really what it is you can share everything that you know and you, you still can't share 50 percent of what you know because a lot of it is to do with your sort of metabolism in a way um, yeah and there's, there's a video out there we call it we symbol makers call it the bosphorus video and it's mm -hmm. it's on youtube of a symbol being produced start to finish i think just someone visited the bosphorus factory camera phone whatever and videoed it you, there's no way on earth you can watch it and then just go got it and make a symbol the same way it just does not work yeah. that way so so that's why i i'm actually i've just filmed another tutorial and usually they're for my patreon members uh, but i'm kind of thinking just debating with myself should i actually just make this one public just literally start to finish it's only a little splash symbol mm -hmm. so it's quite short and sweet and again there's no way someone will be able to go i get it now i'm a symbol maker so yeah I think of, that's the kind of thing that would definitely encourage people to join the Patreon. Exactly. And once I've had an idea like that, it's like now I can't unthink it. I kind of have to now see that through. Because if I decide not to share it, I feel like that's a negative movement or yeah. a movement backwards or something done for a kind of selfish reason. And I kind of refuse to work that way. So. Yeah. I mean, that's like my 
somewhat controversial recent video some people have said oh maybe get rid of that you know blah 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 and I'm like well I, you know I've gone for the process um yeah you you have to move forward into those things and then walk through it I think yeah so, and there will be a through as well there will yeah. be another side to these things yeah yeah always and so yeah I think um yeah, I think I want to, yeah, I'm going to, I mean, when, if if I come and do a, a crash making course, do I get to have a go at some of your symbols as well? Of course. On a drum yeah. kit? Yeah, yeah, okay. I've, I've got this, this kit here and behind the curtain now I'm running a sort of drum shop. So I've got a nice big cozy workshop. So there's a okay. whole load of kits and all sorts and I've always got symbols in. I, the, the main course I run. Are is you selling make, drums and stuff as well then? Or bits and bobs? And stuff. Yeah. There's nowhere else in Bristol now, all the drum shops have gone. So yeah. step up. But yeah, there's another topic. It's their fault that they've gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get yeah, myself killed. That's for the next hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But generally, what I do is 16 inch crash. So, yep. again, that's the blank. Three hours yep. guided session, but made by yourself. Very mm -hmm. chill, very relaxed. But also, people are saying, I like the idea, but could I do a ride like a 20? And like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It'll cost this much more, take this much longer. So, if you want to, if you want to make something, more specific than I'm open yeah. to that too. Hi hats, China, whatever. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I think again, I, I, it's it's a very reasonable proposition. I like, I think it's it's very appealing. Anybody would want to do it. I think so. Uh, as I say, and even my my girlfriend is a pianist, but she would love to make a crash symbol. She loves making things. Cool. So we, we might do a a day out of it. Do a double. Yeah. Come up to Bristol and make a, a symbol each. Something like what? that. Just to yeah, two two sides of a hi hat, one each. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe that's not. No, I think she'd probably she'd be like, no, I want my symbol. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, I'll talk to you about that in, in yeah, due course. Sure. But yeah, sure. great. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I've enjoyed this this a lot. I'm just thinking not to go on for like too long. Uh, I think that there's possibilities that we could dig into other topics or go a bit more into some of the other stuff at some point if you were interested um yeah and yeah cool. it's all it's very my my head sort of goes blah, blah, with lots of uh ideas and then when you actually have the conversation it goes where it goes um and i think that um because the um i recently spoke to um a guy called michael who's an afrobeat drummer and i think there might be a possibility of uh, having some more conversation i quite like the idea of these um uh, you know having some more than one conversation and sort of discovering where things go and we'll see what sort of uh um response we get from this as well hopefully people find it interesting uh so yeah so I'll, I'll wrap this up with thank you very much for your time and uh i'm going to encourage everybody to check out dave's website i'm going to put the link in the description check out dave's patreon as well because he's got lots of information for symbol makers and people who are just passively interested in symbol making so it's worth uh, having a look at that and uh yeah go and buy some collingwood symbols if you can i think that that's that would be the conclusion from today. I, I agree. I support that wholeheartedly. But yeah, okay. thank you as well. I've really enjoyed it. Cool. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dave. And that will be that. See you soon. See you again soon. Yeah, we'll talk soon. <laughs>